everyone. Um, this is Jay Nelson with the Division of Conservation. And most of you probably know me if you're watching this video. If not, if you're a newer employee, you'll probably get to know me at some point in the near future as I handle the state cost share program, the ag water quality plans, all those kind of things with the division. And I do quite a few trainings across the state, typically in a given year. So first of all, if you ha ever have any questions about state cost share or ag water quality plans, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, my number and my email address is really available to all districts, so I'll, I will try to help out as much as possible. So the reason I'm doing this video, I kind of mentioned this, we had several trainings statewide back in the spring with KECDE, and the state cost share modification form is one of the forms that we tend to get the most mistakes on or people don't understand how to fill it out or when to fill it out sometimes correctly. So so I just want to do this really quick video, hopefully, and run through the, the basics of what we're doing here. And I'd really appreciate it if as many people as possible could watch this. Um, if this is a successful type of thing, these little short videos that really help people give me feedback on this because Sometimes people can't make trainings, they can't get out of the office that easily or travel. So if these little videos help, let me know and I'll try to do more of these and you can tell me what you would like help on. And, and this is kind of an easy short way to just have a link on your computer, click it and go right to a short training session if you feel like you don't understand something or you would like to know more about it. So the first thing I want to go into is when exactly do we use a modification form? versus a cost overrun form. That is, that creates a lot of confusion in the state sometimes because you have a state cost share contract, um, you actually get that contract approved, and then when you're ready to press payment or before that, one of two things happen. Either you're spending more money than was estimated for that contract, so whenever you get an application approved, you know you have an estimate on the amount of dollars that we're going to spend on that contract. So what happens if they install all the practices the way it appeared on their original approval and it's over the cost? So if they installed all those practices exactly like they were supposed to and were approved for, and that cost is just higher than we thought it was going to be, then you do a cost overrun form. So that's pretty basic. If they do what they were supposed to do and it just costs more, that's a cost overrun form. And that can be submitted prior to you, just prior to you submitting the, the payment request to the division. A modification form is different in that a modification form should be done if anything from that original application, the, those approved practices, is going to be deviated from. So what does that mean? Okay, so let's say I've already filled out, and I'll just, I'll open this up. I took a screenshot from an actual contract, so I have just transcribed this information right here. This is from a 2022 contract. These are the practices that were approved. Pay particular attention to that 382, that number, with the letter. I'm going to mention that more in just a second. We need both of those on this modification form. You have the units, the number of units, the estimated cost share per unit, and then the total over here. So I just transcribed this real application to this modification form. So that's what you're seeing right here. I just didn't want you to have to see me type all this out while I'm doing the video. So this is what was approved. So let's say this person decides they don't want to do the trails and walkways. So you're, they're changing that original contract from what was approved. So because they're changing the parts of that contract, we've got to do a modification form to reflect that. Similarly, let's say they're going to keep trails and walkways, but from 1,500 square feet, they're going to bump that up to 4,000 square feet. They're going to make it bigger. Again, you're changing that original contract, even though that practice is already on here. We're changing the units on that quite significantly. So we will do what we'll do, and the reason we do this is because we want to keep this fair to everyone. So when you do this modification form and you submit it to our division email, we will actually go in and we'll rescore this contract and compare it to what the cutoff was, the cutoff score was for that program year. 
And if that modification makes it fall below that threshold, in other words, if it wouldn't have been approved in the original batch because it lowers the score, then we will not approve that modification. So that should tell you it's very important to do these modifications if they're needed as early as possible in the process. Don't wait until you're ready to submit the payment form to do this because if we come back and say, no, you can't do that, then you're going to be stuck because you might have to cancel that contract altogether and that's going to be a real issue. And I've had to deal with several of those in the recent past. So, so please do the modifications, preferably before they even start to install their practices. That's the best time to do it so you'll know exactly what you're looking at. But if you can't do it by then, as early in the process as possible, and that way we can let you know, yes, this is going to be good, or no, it's not. We need to look at doing something different. So that's the timing of this form and when to use that form. So on the form, and I apologize, uh, this form, this is the way it looks on my original file, which you'll receive in an email probably with this link. These boxes up here are kind of shaded blue. Um, for some reason on this particular computer I'm using, that doesn't show up that well. They look white to me anyway right now. So that's the only slight difference you might notice. Another thing I want to mention up front right here before we keep going is I'm going to send this file out to all the field reps to distribute to the counties and also to KECD so that everybody gets a digital version of this Excel form. Now, you're going to find the same modification form in another file that we have on our DOC website. It's called the District Workbook, the State Cost Share District Workbook. That has like six, seven, eight forms in it that include all the reporting forms and all that. This same file is one of the tabs in that workbook. The reason I'm sending this out differently in a, in a file by itself, you can use that one online. That's perfectly fine. It's the same form. We will process it just the same. However, because of the website that we, we are housed in as a state government agency, I have several drop down boxes on this form that make it easier. So when we click up here in county, you see a drop down box. Um, practice court category, we see a drop down box. Month, we see a drop down box. So that makes the form first easier and a little more intuitive to use. So it's a, it's a good tool to use. And I think it makes the workflow go a little bit more smoothly. And we'll go over the direct instructions over here in a second. But that is not supported. That makes it a different type of Excel file, and that type of Excel file is not supported on our DOC server, however that stuff works. I'm not an IT person, but where that, that website is housed, it cannot support the Excel macro files. So those drop-down boxes are not available on that sheet in our Excel workbook. So I just wanted to point that out. You'll see this in both places. But this standalone one is a little bit easier to use and has a little bit better functionality than the other. <clears throat> now, another thing that I did on this one, before we had the instructions down at the bottom of this page, um, pretty much this page as it is on the left prints really nicely if you don't mess with the, the spaces in here too much. Um, we had the instructions on a separate page below it, but you had to scroll down and scroll back up, and not everybody even saw the instructions. So I did put the instructions out to the side this time. So when you're actually working on this, you can look at the instructions if you need to reference something. Um, if you do print this, um, the print cutoff is right over here, so this will be on a separate page. You'll just print the first page, and that should work out fine. So the instructions basically say to go through this and just fill out what is asked for in each of these blanks. So a couple of things. Some of these are just intuitive. I don't mention them in the, in the instructions. You pick your county. We'll pick Barron here in the drop-down box. The month that you're actually doing this modification, so that's the current month that you're working on this and I'm going to submit it. I have, you have a drop-down box for the month, so you can put your month in there. And then 2023, um, that's a static date. Um, just if we're still in, using the same version next year, just put 2024 in there. Just overwrite that. That'll be fine. Um, contract ID. I do want to point out here. Um, you have to fill this in yourself. Be sure, so when we have these applications approved, you know that our system, the e system, gives it a unique six-digit code, right? So that's the contract ID that we use. However, when we send out the approval list, 
we actually have more digits. We have seven more digits in there. So what those digits are is are going to be the years. So we will put the year first, just like this will appear on your approval list. The county, I think Barron is 005, and then the contract ID is six numbers. So put those six numbers in there, and that's your contract ID. Of course, here, you fill in the applicant name over here. So we'll just make up a name. So there's kind of your clerical information right there. Now, practice category, very important that you put the correct one in here. So this also is a drop-down box. So as you know, if you've worked with that cost share, you have four options here. Um, this one's going to be a livestock pasture land, so we'll put that in there. Now, one thing to remember while I'm thinking about it, because I'll forget, when we do a modification, we cannot jump between practice categories. So what that means is, is if you're approved for a pasture land category BMP, you cannot change this to a cropland in the modification. You have to stay within the same category. You cannot change the whole scope of the entire application when you do a modification. If that's the case, if, if these practices are no longer needed and you're going to do cropland, you're going to cancel this contract and we'll just wait for the next year to apply for state cost share. So now here's where we get to a part that confuses some people sometimes. So original practices approved. Again, I've already mentioned up front. I just transcribed from the application that was in eForms, that was what was approved. That's going to be what I put in here. So all these practices, this is just transcribed exactly what was approved on the original contract. Okay, so this is a snapshot of that. So I have a column out here that says action, and it goes through this over here in the instructions. So the action column is you're going to have three options, and this is also a drop-down box on this particular form. Now, you won't see this in the online and the, the State Cost Share Workbook file, but in here, you click it, and it says keep. So that means you're going to keep that practice just like it is. Remove. You're going to delete that practice out. Are you going to edit the units? That practice is going to stay in the, app the application, but you're going to edit the units here on how many units you're actually putting in. So you have those three options, and you have to do this for each one of these lines here. So for this purpose, we'll put keep for the fence. We'll make it pretty simple on this one because I don't want to type too much. Keep, keep, and then let's say the trails and walkways are, is the one that we're going to edit the units on. So we're going to change the units on that. So we're going to edit the units here. And we're going to change the units. Now, you're going to leave it just like it was on this column. Down here is where we're going to put the new units in. And then let's say we're going to delete out this heavy use area. Let's just let's just say we're not going to we're not going to need that heavy use area anymore. Okay, so I've gone through all the functions. This is what the new contract is going to look like, basically. You're going to have four practices instead of five. So, and a couple things before I go to the next column or next chart. So first of all. This column will automatically tally your total. So if you put the correct numbers in here, the dollars, the, the cost share amount, the estimated cost share amount, it'll calculate here and it'll do so down here as well. Another thing that I put in this note over here in the instructions, when we're filling out the practice code, it is very important that you not only, not only put the NRCS practice code, which is 382, but in state cost share, we have divided up some of these practice categories and we have different types of practices under each code. For instance, fence has, I think, seven or eight different uses under state cost share. And we divide all those out. So we have fence 382, A, B, C, D, E, F, on and on. So it's very important that you put that letter along with the NRCS practice code number. So practice code means the entire thing for state cost share, not just the number. And I, I spell that out over here in the instructions. The reason for that, if you haven't been to my trainings, is we score these applications based on different uses of different practices. So, for example, a fence, a 382A, in this case, this is an exclusion fence. We're keeping animals out of, say, a stream. That's very important. That gets a very high score in state cost share. If it's a 382E, if it's just cross fence within a pasture, 
I mean, that's a good use, but it's not quite as important as keeping them out of a stream. That's a direct impact. So this one's going to, 382A scores higher than 382C. So that's why it's very important that you put these in here. Now, I can look these up online and figure them out a lot of times, but it's much, much easier and saves me a lot of time if you do that for me. Now, down here, it's much more important because I don't necessarily know what you mean when you're changing these. So I want to make sure that you're keeping on point or what you're doing when you have the new practices requested. So let's go down here. So we're keeping the first three. So let's go ahead and see if this will let me copy and paste these in order. Yes. And I apologize, I'm so with this stuff. So, one thing I want you to remember right here, is, as you can see, even though we're keeping these first three practices just like they are on the application, they're going in both both tables here, the first and the last, because this bottom one the bottom table is a snapshot of what the new contract is going to look like. So if you have keep on here, you're going to duplicate those practices down at the bottom. They're going to be the same, top and bottom. You're going to, you're going to duplicate those. Now, trails and workways, again, we're going to keep that. Let's see if this will let me do this. But down here, whereas originally, we're going to edit the units, right? So down here, you or up here, I'm sorry, you have 50, 1,500 square feet. Down here, you're going to change that number to the new total. So let's say we're going to bump that up to 3,000 feet, right? So now we've got 3,000 feet, and of course the cost is going to go up. That's going to be, I'm just going to put 1,200 in there, because I'm not going to calculate it out, actually, but it's going to roughly, probably 1,300 would be better. But now you're going to have a new total down here, and this is going to reflect what the new contract is going to look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back, go back in and rescore what you have here and make sure that it's going to fall within that 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 score cutoff that we have on the original list that we did. So I hope that's pretty clear to everybody. Again, if you're going to keep, you're going to see these, you're going to duplicate these down to here because this is a snapshot of the new application, as I like to call it, um, after the modification. It's very important that either you or your technical staff puts in some kind of description on why you did this change. You don't have to write a book on it, but there needs to be some kind of reason, okay, um, we made a mistake in measuring it the, the first time. That's very common, that, and that's perfectly fine. We'll, we'll just have to roll with it, and, and we'll take that in consideration. Or the landowner decided not to do this practice for this reason. Um, there can be any any amount of reasons, but you need to put some kind of description on why this happened, because if we start looking at this and say we bump the score quite a bit, or I'm sorry, bump the dollars quite a bit, we're going to say, okay, well, is this a good use of this funding? And that's what we're going to be looking at. So the last thing is going to be the signature. So that can be, to personally, I don't care if that's technical agents, technical staff signature or conservation district chairman. I think it's prudent for your conservation district to vote on all these modifications at the next available meeting. Just because this is just like you have to vote on the original contracts that are put into the system. Um, this is a change to one of those contracts. So this should be that this should be at least voted on by the district. And then the applicant needs to sign this as well. So I hope this is pretty clear to everybody. This video went a little bit longer than I planned on going, but this is just something that you can kind of keep in your back pocket. Keep this link in here so that you can go back and review this if you have any questions. And as always, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to me or your field rep, and we will help you out with that. So thank you. And again, if you have any more things that you would like for me to just cover in a short video, reach out to me and let me know, and I'll be happy to do so. Thank you.